Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plug and Boutique and today we're taking a look at Forzo Essentials from Heaviosity. This is a brand new contact instrument. It really isn't brand new. I should point out this is the stripped back kind of entry level version of their Forzo instrument that came out I think a year ago. It's brass or cinematic brass and it's absolutely phenomenal. I've done a video on it. Definitely check it out. But today I'm going to focus on the brass designer. So before I jump into the actual tutorial, let me tell you what you get when you grab Forzo Essentials. Inside of the instruments, you can see you got your full brass ensemble. Uh, inside of the regular one or the, uh, the main version, you get all of those instruments. You get the full one, but you also get each one of the instruments soloed. Inside of the Essentials, you get the full mix. You also get the brass designer and the loop designer. Each one of these has their own set of presets. So if I come in here to the brass designer essentials, you'll see that I got a number of different presets. And that's the same deal with the loop designer. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and show you how to make kind of a beginning to like an epic cinematic sound bed. And this is the one I've come up with to start. Pretty epic. So let's go ahead and do that. And along the way, I'm gonna show you how to get started with the brass designer. And I'm also gonna show you around the instrument. So all of these parameters are pretty much the same, no matter whether you're using the brass ensemble, the brass designer, or the loop designer, they're all gonna be the same and function the same. So uh, hopefully you'll have a good idea. So instead of choosing a preset, I'm just gonna come down to brass essentials initial. This just has all of the automation and stuff gone, and I can pretty much start from scratch. So this is what it sounds like. It sounds phenomenal. So if I cover over any one of these channels, and I have three channels where I can load samples or loops, uh, you'll see that it browse comes up. So I'm gonna click that. And now I can come in and choose from the ensemble or the loops and load them into any one of these channels. So what I'm gonna do is just come in here to Ensemble, Mix, and choose Random Flutters for channel one. Now I can come over here to Browse for channel two, or I can just do it right inside of this browser. Click channel two, and I'm gonna choose Random Flutters for that one as well. And on channel three, I'm gonna come into Loops. I'm gonna to go to Low Ambient and just choose Heavy Handed to start. So if I close out of there, this is what we have now. All right, very, very cool. So what I wanna do is actually, because these are the same, I want to pan them to the left and the right and then add volume automation. So they're kind of adding a nice stereo field to our sound. So the way to do that is to use the macro control here in the middle. So first thing we need want is this macro control to move. So to do that, we come over here to macro sequence and I need to turn it on and now if I, play or press a key on my keyboard, this macro control will move from the left to the right based on this step sequencer. Now what I want to do is take the panning of both of these and add it to this. And you do that by these two arrows that up and down, anything that has these two arrows can be automated by the macro control. So what I'm gonna do is just take the panning here and move it like this and take the panning here. Instead of going up, I'm gonna drag down, which is gonna pan it to the left. So let's listen to what we have now. And in fact, let me go ahead and mute the heavy handed so we can just hear the flutters here. All right, so to further kind of push this to make it more seemingly wide, what I'm gonna do is automate the volume control. Something like this, and we'll see what this does. Okay, so I wanna go opposite on these two, just so when one's loud, the other is quiet. All 
All right, so we got some really nice stereo movement here. The next thing I would do is go ahead and unmute this and just listen to everything. Very cool. So this definitely needs some reverb. And we can add reverb um, a number of different ways. I can come into Master Effects and turn on the reverb here, which is going to be for the output, the main output of the mix of the three channels. Or I can jump into Space here and add the reverb independently to each one of the channels. So here I'm selecting Channel 1, Channel 2, Channel 3, or I can link them and do essentially the same thing as the Master Effects. I'm going to go ahead and choose just to use the master effects because it's easier. Turn it on. Click right here and let's go cavern large and see what that sounds like. Maybe turn up the size even more. And we can do the same thing for something like delay as well. The, another really cool thing about Forzo Essentials is the addition of the punish knob and the twist knob. And these are really cool. If you really want to push this into distortion and just really kind of aggressive, you want to use this punish effect. I'm going to leave it on at a low value. And the twist adds this kind of like filtering fluctuation that sounds really cool. And we are already well on our way. Now I also want to show you how to use these as well. So what I'm going to do is jump into the gate. And now that I see the gate, I'm going to turn it on, but I'm going to link everything just so you can really hear it. Turn it on. Isn't that cool? Now I can also automate these. So I'm going to pull down the amount and then turn up the automation here. And you'll notice that nothing is happening. The ball isn't moving along the automation line. And that's because I need to enable the automation up here. And here we go. Now, right now, the preset of the macro control is going from all the way left to all the way right. So zero to 100, essentially. If I want to reduce or increase or flip how that's playing out with this particular automation for the gate, I can click and drag like this to shorten it. And if you look down here, the, the full length will be a lot shorter. It won't go over the full length that I've set down here. It'll go over this full length in comparison to that. If I want to flip it, I can just click right there and then it will be flipped down there. And I can smooth that out or make it a little bit more aggressive. So that's very, very cool. And you can do stuff like randomize that sequence. You can also randomize the sequencer here as well. Turn up the length and get some really big fluctuations here. If you, and right now, if you notice, it's kind of really jumping. If you turn up smoothing, that will be a lot more gradual in between the actual steps. Now, for this particular sound, I wouldn't use this gate. I'd actually come in and turn it off. I just wanted to show you kind of how to get started with these automation sliders for these different controls. And they all work the same way, including the filter, the EQ, the envelope, and so on. And remember, when you jump into these pages, you have control over each one of the channels independently, or you can link them together easily enough. So you have a ton of control over the sound inside of this instrument. Now, one thing that's really cool is now that I have everything kind of dialed into what I like, I can simply change these by clicking right here, and I've got a new sample here. And I can do the same thing with these as well. Maybe I want to come into loops and add a high motif or something over here. And for channel two, loops and do high rhythmic or something. And 
<laughs> so now that I have my effects and kind of the overall feeling of how things should sound, I can jump in and use the different loops and samples to create something new very, very easily. And then of course, I still have full control over all of these parameters. We do have the main page, we've got the source page. If you don't wanna click browse button up here, we have further options down here. Over here, we have the cycling. This, is a, uh, this deserves its own tutorial in and of itself. But if you turn it on, you can see that kind of the starting position is jumping around and not just staying in one spot. Uh, you've got a number of different presets in here that you can choose from as well. And again, you have control over that over the, each one of the channels, or you can link them all together. Really get some interesting results. Then we have the macro sequencer we've already talked about. And then we have the master effects down here. Again, something we've already talked about. Ah, so cool. Anyway, that's a introduction to the Brass Designer inside of Fortso Essentials. It, the Brass Designer does work the same exact way in the full version of the instrument. You just have much more sounds to choose from when making your own. Anyway, I've been Joshua Casper here for Plugin Boutique. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.